between you. All other tropical storms must bow before El Nino. Yo soy El Nino. For those of you who don't habla Espanol, El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. All right, well, despite being the punchline for late 90s sketch comedy routines or the main catchphrase for any major weather situation across the Americas in the late 90s, what exactly is El Nino? What happens when one occurs? And uh, what should you be prepared for if one was to occur? All right, everybody, meteorologist Robert Spetty here with you today in this latest episode of Western Pacific Weather 101. We're going to explain just that. By definition, El Nino, or sometimes referred to as the ENSO, or the El Nino Southern Oscillation, is a band of anonymously warm ocean water temperatures that periodically develop off the western coast of South America. Basically, it takes place when warmer waters from the western Pacific start to drift towards the east. Reason why we're actually doing this update today is because just recently the new U.S. National Weather Service uh, issued an El Nino watch stating they were currently monitoring a very warm pool of water in the western Pacific and seeing if it was going to drift farther off there towards the east. And if it did, that would bring the onset of one of these El Nino events. I do want to mention this actually happens periodically. The most notable year in recent history was in January of 1997 when a major El Nino set in. But also, we get these La Nina events where kind of the reversal happens and the warm pool of water builds up in the western Pacific. In this case, it brings more precipitation across the Philippines and much of southeastern Asia. Also influences tropical systems for the worst, meaning that many of these southeastern Asian countries will likely get hit harder by tropical systems. Now that's with a La Nina event. What we're going to be talking about today though is the El Nino event and this is just caused by that major shift in the whole ocean's currents. Everything kind of pushes off here towards the east and what we're going to be seeing are warmer conditions across the entire equatorial Pacific persist. Winds are often generally weaker along the equator because of that well, it's a less of a temperature gradient between the east and the west, and convection develops all across the equatorial Pacific. The thermocline is deeper and shallower than normal from east to west, and that also causes all well, that lack of a wind. So that means more rain showers farther here towards the east, but if you're in Indonesia, even across parts of Malaysia, over towards southern Philippines, less rainfall there for you. And once again, here's just comparing the El Nino and La Nina events. In an El Nino year, warm waters across the entire Pacific Ocean right around the equatorial area, vice cold in the east and warm in the west. That means lighter winds. Rain showers really develop up in the central Pacific. And what we are seeing is less precipitation farther towards the west because of the prevailing easterlies are just less intense. That's going to mean more, well, rain showers along the western seaboards of North America as well, and something to keep in mind there. In a La Nina year, you can see the showers really start to build up the warmer sea surface temperatures off there towards the western seaboard. So that just kind of compares it up so you can see, at least in a graphical standpoint, the difference between uh, both of these much warmer temperatures off there towards the east. So if you're from the Western Pacific, what exactly is going to be occurring here? Well, I already brought up this graphic already, and I just want to break it down. We're going to be seeing more rainfall into the Pacific Islands, farther towards the east, the Solomon Islands, around Vanuatu, even extending out towards French Polynesia. Meanwhile, though, the Philippines would see less precipitation and a strong El Nino, El Nino year. The overall precipitation well below normal. On that note, cyclones will not also be hitting the Philippines or much of southeastern Asia. Instead, high pressure is going to set over that area. The Westpac High would drift a little bit farther towards the east, and Korea and much of Japan would see a more likely chance of experiencing strong typhoons during an El Nino year because of the position of the high pressures. Granted, this is just what has happened in the past. It doesn't mean that's what would be happening this year. We would still have to see the onset of the El Nino to occur. But if a strong one did occur, 
uh, these are typically what would happen as far as climatology is concerned. That is all for right now, everybody. If you want more information on El Nino or La Nina events, please do go to meded.ucar.edu. You can sign up there for a free account, not just for El Nino events, but also for any type of major weather, weather events or just meteorology weather 101. There is great online tools there to use, numerous modules. Basically, uh, you, it almost feels like you're getting a college degree if you go through every single one of these uh, different products available for free. If you are inspiring to become a meteorologist or if you're already one and you just want to refresh on some information, this is really a great tool to go. And I got a lot of the products for uh, today's video update from that site. So thanks again for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for me, you can post them down there in the comment box below. Also, please do go ahead, find us on Facebook and Twitter at Westpac Weather. You can follow me at Robert Spetta. Or uh, you can go ahead and uh, just click that like button and please do check out some of our other things we have at our website at westernpacificweather.com. Thanks for watching, everybody, and stay safe out there. Bye.